Today I'm out in the shop and I'm gonna troubleshoot a couple of lights, a couple of warning lights. I've got a ABS warning light and then a restraint system or an airbag light that's flashing at me right now that's gonna come on and stay on in just a minute. The check engine light is on because I have the key on and, and don't have the engine started. Of course, the battery light, generator light um, is on because the engine hasn't started and the alternator's not turning. Doing this on my 2005 F-150 with a 5.4 liter, but this applies to any OBD2 uh, equipped car or light truck that's onboard diagnostic 2 system. And um, I'm going to use my new scan reader. Normally I use my tuner that I keep in the truck and I've done a video on this Super Chips tuner. It works really good for reading engine codes and PCM codes because it programs the PCM, but it doesn't do you much good on either this ABS light or the restraint system light. So you need a real scan tool for that. This is a scan tool I picked up on Amazon for about a hundred bucks. And here's the Amazon page. I'll put a link to the Amazon page in the video description, but I paid uh, with tax $107.22. Uh, it's normally $150, but that was a special buy or something. So if you look for these tool, these scan tools on Amazon, you may be able to find them uh, cheaper than the list price. Um, anywhere, $100 to $150 for this tool. But look for one with the ABS feature and the restraint system feature, so engine and transmission. So that's what um, I did a search for this one. And this is the one that came up the cheapest that, that does both ABS and the restraint system. All right, to get started, I need to plug my OBD2 connector into my OBD2 port that's underneath my steering wheel. Typically, they're located near the steering column underneath the steering wheel above the pedals. This scan tool is nice because it's powered by the OBT2 port. It's not powered by its own battery. The reason I say that's nice is because I have other scan tools that you need to plug in. It seems like the battery's always dead when you need it. This particular tool will automatically read what kind of car you have, but you need to tell it to do that. So it's got the diagnostic feature, the settings, and it looks like because I've had this hooked up to the car before, or this F-150 before, it already knows what truck I'm in. So normally there's a scan uh, icon right here, and you hit, get on top of that, use your keys over here on the side, get on top of that, hit OK, and then you can go in and ask it to scan um, the PCM on your particular car and determine what kind of car you have. And then you also have to tell it to scan for the different computers. And it already knows, let me go back, the escape key. It already knows that I'm in the F-150 because it's been connected before. So here's the screen I was talking about. I had to go back from where I was at, go back out and it's got the OBD2 um, scan and review you go on top of scan and it'll look for the kind of car that you have obviously it must since I've scanned this truck before it knows what truck I'm in so um, now it's it's thinking that I'm saying it's not the right truck so it's having me select what uh, vehicle I have I don't want to do that since it always knows. And then there's also a place to scan for the computers, like I said, underneath there. And so if I go back here, it'll read the what, what uh, different systems it can process and what it can read. And um, then monitor status. So what I want to do 
is go over and hit OK there. So we go into automatic mode. So there it's reading the different modules that it can read. Say PCM, the restraint system. Okay, so now it came up with a different computers that it can look at. So the four by four control module, the ABS, anti-lock brakes, and then the powertrain control module, and then the restraint control module, which is all good. I wanna look at, um, uh, we'll look at the ABS first and I want to read fault data and I select it by saying okay the center button and key on and okay so there's my fault code it says wheel speed sensor the rear speed sensor is a fault at fault and I just replaced that recently but I used a uh, aftermarket Chinese made you know if you watch my videos you know I like to use motorcraft parts a lot of times and I didn't for that sensor so I need to investigate why that sensor is given a fault whether it's wiring or my new speed sensor and let's go back hit the escape button go back to screens three screens, four screens. Okay, so I'm still on top of the ABS and I wanna to go to the restraint to see what my fault is for the restraint. I hit okay. It's reading it, so I wanna read fault data, yep. So, and the engine is, the key is on. So let's, please wait. There we go. Restraint impact sensor is at fault. And that is uh, the sensor that's in the front of the truck up by the front bumper. So when you have a hard impact, it um, vibrates and tells the system that you had a hard impact and it triggers the uh, airbags. So I have to investigate that, see if it's wiring or if it's a sensor. You need a scan tool to see what your system is doing. A light on the dash doesn't tell you much, but this scan tool for $100 is a valuable uh, shop tool. Okay, let's get to work and investigate those two faults. The new sensor did indeed solve the ABS malfunction. This is the old sensor. I just replaced it and did a short test drive. So my light is now off. You can see I haven't fixed the um, crash or the impact sensor yet and the lights flashing and then going to go solid there. In my other video I talked about how the sensor needs to come into proximity of this tone ring. And that's how it uh, reads the speed by all these little teeth on the tone ring. But I don't think I stressed that when you take this out there's this area above the o-ring that's in the bore that's in the hole on top of the differential that can get dirt in it and rust in it make sure you clean that out so that this sensor can seat all the way down into the differential into that rear axle that's important because if you don't clean that out it'll sit down about this far because the o-ring's new and it won't be able to press through all that dirt and grime. So make sure you take a green pad or some 80 grit sandpaper or something. Stick your finger in there and, and clean that bore out. This mating surface needs to sit all the way down onto the axle housing. The bolt shouldn't be trying to pull it down. It should be pushed in and fit flat against it. Because notice the housing on this uh, sensor is plastic and it can distort with the bolt. So you don't want to have to be pushing it in 
with the bolt, you should be able just to push it in with your finger. My impact sensor was indeed bad. Mine came apart in pieces. I did a separate video showing the replacement of that sensor. Be sure to check out the end screen for a link to that video. Well, my, uh, my warning light didn't flash. It normally flashes, but it came on like it's supposed to, and then it went out. So that's a good indication that we fixed the problem. That concludes the video. We took care of both faults. Took care of the airbag fault, and we took care of that uh, ABS fault. So if you find the video helpful, let me know in the comments. Please subscribe. I look forward to your comments.